Hi, my name is Phoebe, and in this video, we're going to go over how to create a decorative pillow. It should be really fun and easy, and we'll touch upon a bunch of different things, but at the end of the day, you'll be able to make a decorative pillow. Um, so let's jump right on in and have some fun learning. So here I have Chloe open and ready to go. The first thing I'm going to do is create some patterns. So to create some patterns, I'm going to go to my rectangle tool right over here in my 2D toolbar. If I click down, you can then get your rectangle tool. You can also hit the hotkey, which is S. I can then just click once with my left mouse button and type in the measurements that I want. So clicking once with your left mouse will get this precision box. That will be the same for most of the time. If you click once with almost any of these creation tools, you'll then get a precision box. You can also type in the amount of shapes you want. I want two because I want a front and a back for a pillow. Now I'm going to hit OK. And now I have my two pattern pieces. I can then select them here and find them in my 3D window. I'm now just going to use my gizmo tool to quickly and easily position these so that they're all set up for myself. Now I am using the local coordinate gizmo tool. If you right click, you can actually change your gizmo right in here. And you just have to right click anywhere in your 3D window. And I'm just gonna rotate this so that it lays on the ground nice and flat. If you hold down shift, that will lock it. You'll kind of feel like um, it lock a bit. All right, so now that this is all set up, the next thing I'm going to do is start to sew. So I'm gonna use my segment sewing tool right over here. And I'm gonna sew in my 3D window. I just find it easier to sew pillows in my 3D window because it can get a little bit complicated in my 2D. But you can, of course, sew it in your 2D if that's what you're comfortable with. You also could have used your free sewing tool if you wanted to, but I like my sewing tool. All right, so now let's do the magical thing and let's turn on some gravity, which is simulation and our tool is right over here. So you can click this button or you could hit your space bar, either or. Now, unfortunately, our pillow isn't really inflated. It kind of fell flat and we're like, what? No worries. So to get it to fall back, we're going to just select our pattern pieces over here. You can select them in your 2D or 3D window. I'm also gonna turn off simulation. I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and select them. And over here in your property editor, Yours is probably down below. I moved mine up so that you could see it a little bit better. But over here in your property editor, you're going to see some new information populate. Because one good thing to always remember is your pro property editor is always changing based off of what you're clicking on. So because I just clicked on these pattern pieces, the information in my property editor is going to be slightly different now. So if I scroll all the way down to simulation properties, and here I see pressure, here, I can actually increase my pressure, and if I turn on my simulation, you'll see how when I play around with this toggle, the pressure is going to adjust. Pretty cool, right? So there are a few things that I do want to tell you about pressure. If you already know everything there is to know about pressure, just tune me out, and like three minutes, I'll start telling you new things. But for those of you who don't know everything there is to know about pressure, please listen in. So pressure is really great. It allows you to create this like puffed up pillow and other things like that. But it all does depend on what the facing of your fabric is. So because my fabric, both of the like front face of my fabrics are facing out towards like the viewer and everything, that is why I could apply pressure, the same like positive pressure to both. However, if I select this pillow and I, I'm right clicking and I did click normal, I'm just going to select this top one and right click and freeze so that it doesn't fly away. If I now hit simulate, it will now concave in, like it's now going in. It's going to concave in, whatever. Um, you see, because 
depending on the face of the fabric, that is how the how like it is going to be pushed. So positive pressure actually pushes the back of your fabric. So it pushes the back of your fabric so that it raises so that your front back, front face is then raised up. However, if you have it so like the back of your fabric is actually um, facing out, then it's going to like indent in like you see here. To fix that, all I would have to do is then do negative 12 pressure. And then I could thinly, and it would still look like this pillow. I put that on freeze. However, because we want both of our faces out towards the viewer, what we're going to do is I'm going to select this, right click, flip normal, and go back to 12. So that's just a little information that I wanted to give you about pressure. It wasn't that bad. So we are not just doing this for the pillow. Um, we're doing a decorative pillow. This is just a plain pillow. So now what we're going to do is add some quilting lines to our pillow. To do that, we're going to go to our internal polygon line tool, which is right below that square tool, so rectangle tool. And so we're going to select that, and we're going to make some diamonds because who doesn't want to go with diamond? I mean, your diamonds are a girl's best friend. Those are the jokes, folks. Um, you don't like them. I don't know what to tell you. I wish I was one of your two. Um, so these aren't exactly perfect. Now, you, I'm okay with it, but I know some of you are like, no, no, no. What if I wanted it to be perfect? There's a lot of ways in which you could make it perfect. This is one. I'm going to select this line and I'm going to say right click and do split. So now I have all of these options for split. I'm going to say uniform split so that I have a center point. I'm going to hit OK. All right. So now I'm going to do the same at the bottom and split. I'm laughing because I'm like, if I was all alone, I would never do this because okay. So now I'm going to move this in and all of that. Now what's also really nice is there when you hold down shift you're going to get like your your lines are going to be able to move straight and you can even see these smart guides with this purple line to help you and also there's a purple line to help you line it up uh, right directly with there and oops. let me make sure this is all lined up great now look at that it's straight if i wanted to even make sure that it was straight over here watch that I can go to this eye and now I can get a guideline and have this straight. And now I can just move it so that that is there. And then that goes in there. And now we've got, wow, that's kind of perfect. You also could do other points and all of that. It's pretty easy. Now we can also go to the sides. I'm gonna do it just for those of you who are like, yeah, that's what I want. And if that's what you want, great. So I'm gonna do split. And again, I'm gonna do uniform. And I'm gonna split and do uniform. Great. Also, okay, if you wanted to do the most, which I'm sure there's some of you who are that person, you could do split and then, <laughs> What you could do is for like this line one, the yellow one, you could do like uh, one inch. Say okay. And then you could also do right click. Um, so one inch. Okay. And then you could take this little and then this little point. And look at that. And then you could do the same for here because then you could make sure everything's really perfect. And then you could have done the same over there so that it was truly all lined up. I'm not that person. I wish I was, but I'm not. Okay, and look at that. Look at that. Now I feel like I need to adjust this though, but we're not doing it. Okay, so now we've got our internal lines. It's looking great. We've got our diamonds. They're the girl's best friend. 
Um, we're all material girls living in the material world. Um, and now I'm just gonna right click. And what I'm gonna do is layer from under. So right here, why I'm layering from under is because this will make a complete duplicate copy and also it will sew everything together. Now, some of you might be asking this question. Well, why didn't you layer from under first? Great question. This is why. If I layer cloned under, I'm gonna show you it on this one. Right click, and if I did layer clone under, and then I added in my lines, guess what? I they they wouldn't be sewn together. So then I would have to sew them all. And I know, like for a pillow, you're like that's not really a big deal, but. Imagine if you were making a puffer jacket or if you have a lot of quilting lines, then it would be a big deal. So that is why I always put in the internal lines first and then layer flow under. And you can actually even see the um, all the sewing lines and everything all connected right here. So now to make this look more realistic, I'm going to select this bottom one and I'm actually going to give it, you guessed it, pressure and I'm going to give it negative five pressure and simulate so that it puffs down and like look at that look how much this looks like a quilt to pillar looks so much like a quilt to pillar so now if I wanted to like give puff it back up a bit I could just select the two fronts like the two outer ones and add some more pressure here and I could also like maybe add some more pressure here and all of that looking great. Look at that. Okay, we aren't done yet though. We're gonna add like some ruffles to the sides. So now I'm gonna click here and we're gonna add some ruffles. So we're gonna do width 20, um, height two, I'm gonna say four. Now I could have done one long one all around, but I'm not about that life. So this is what I'm doing. Now I'm going to do free sew for these edges because when I did that like perfection diamond thing, um, I created segment, like separate segment lines. So I need to do the free sew so that everything is all sewn easily. Okay, now instead of just having simulate and having them all move, I'm going to actually superimpose these to the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in my 3D window and say superimpose side. This is a really helpful tool. I use it often. It's kind of great. It glues, it like places your pattern pieces based off of where you sewed it and the sewing lines. So now it's superimpose side. What I'm also going to do as a little trick is I'm going to do layer one so that it's above. And when I hit simulate, look at that. They're all out. And look at that, something's wrong. It's okay, there's control Z for a reason. I have a feeling I sewed something wrong. It's just a feeling, we're gonna find out if I'm right. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong. Everything looks okay. Okay, let's try it again. All right. I think it's just because it was like caught inside. All right, cool. So I do see though that some of mine are flipped. So I'm just gonna select this, right click and flip normal. And now I'm just gonna select these edges and change it back to layer zero. And you know what I'm also gonna do? I'm gonna change the particle distance of these. If you don't know a lot about particle distance, I would suggest going into our beginner's training guide and watching that it's really helpful and it gives you a lot of great information about different ways in which um co works and just like some great background info to help you achieve what you want to achieve so i want these like little ruffles to poop up so i'm using pressure and add like two that's great and now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to have a separate fabric for these edges because we're, this is a decorative pillow, so like we're fancy people. So one fabric isn't enough for us, obviously. Um, 
I want you all to know I have a lot of throw pillows in my house apartment. So like I'm not putting any judgment on anybody. Okay, so we have our pillow. It's looking great. Now we get to do the most fun part and add materials to everything. I think it's the most fun part. So first I'm going to go into my library here and I'm going to go into my fabrics. Quill has a bunch of different default fabrics. I'm actually going to use a linen. And what's nice, okay, what's really nice is when you hit simulate, so I'm going to turn off pressure so it doesn't just like keep going. When you have simulation on, I'm first going to find the linen. Here it is. When you drop the fabric in and then you simulate, you'll see it change. Ooh, actually, know what we're going to do because I'm, I'm leaning into the fancy. We're going to change it to like a silk. I just don't know which one. As you can see, when you hover over, um, you can see like a preview of how it will drape and look within Clo, which is really nice. I think I want to do this one. Okay. Wow. We're getting real fancy. That looks great. Okay, we've got now a silk pillow. Fantastic. So now that we've got our fabric in, I'm going to add a print on top. So I'm going to go into my artwork here in my library. You can add like any folder you want within Clo. Again, if you want to know more, check out the beginner's guide. There's a link below um, in the description of this video. Please check it out. So I'm going to add in this print. I'm just going to drag and drop it onto my fabric. There's a lot of different ways in which you can add prints and stuff. Again, beginner's guide. It's really great. If I go over here to my edit texture tool, I can select my print and now adjust and move the size of this around to however I would like it. I can also, since I decided to do like a silky thing, I can also now select this and change my type and maybe make it like a silk satin so that's like silky. Wow. Now I need a different fabric for this because I actually want to add tassels because this is a very fancy pillow. We are not eating around this couch at all. Like that is the level of fancy. And I'm just going to, again, so for this one, I'm going to drag and drop the texture onto my fabric. I do want you all to know there's multiple ways in which you could do this. You could have also selected this fabric, changed it to become opaque, Add, right clicked and added this as a graphic and then placed it on. And that would have worked too. Like both ways are perfect. I'm just going to do the fabric way because honestly, just because like that's the way I'm doing it. It's because both ways are perfect. Like you can use whichever way you want. There's a thousand ways to do almost everything within Clo. It's all in whichever way you like doing it the most. And if you like, doing it with graphics, then do it with graphics. If you like doing it with fabric, then do it with fabric. So now I'm just going to use, again, this edit texture. You have it in both your 3D and 2D window, so you can use it in both. What is nice about the 2D window is if you right click while clicking and holding down, you'll get a precision box. Gotta love a precision box. And you can then adjust and move this. Pretty cool. Kind of rad. All right. Um, and now what I can also do is I can rotate this all around so that it's the right way. You can also change brain lines if you wanted to, but we're not about that. Um, but that is something that your tech designer should do. So we're gonna just place this exactly where we want it to be. You can continue to like fiddle around with this so that it's exactly perfect and everything looks exact and amazing. This is when I am that person and I'm like, yeah, we're taking the time. But that, that looks great. Okay. So now we've got our tassels and what we can also do is we're gonna select our tassels. I'm gonna go to our color tab in our property editor and we're gonna use that eyedropper tool and we're gonna get a color.
from the pillow because yeah, you can DTM things. Great. So now we've got that all set. Now we're gonna do the finishing touches. So we're gonna add a button and we're gonna add some top stitches. So again, if you wanna know more about buttons and how you can add them and everything, beginner guide. It really has almost everything you need. But there are, our button tool is over here in our 3D window. You can click it right here. And what's nice is you can add it in either your 2D or 3D window. I'm gonna do 2D because I wanna be able to place it right on top of these like intersections and everything. So look at that. I mean, just going around and placing them. What's nice is then we're going to adjust these buttons so that they look exactly how we want them to look. I think that's it, right? No, it's not. There you go. Okay, great. We've got our buttons. And now let's also go into our top stitch. Now, again, for those of you who don't know, in our hardware and trims library folder, there's a whole library of ISO standard top stitches that you can just drag and drop into your object browser. Or, of course, you can create your own top stitch if you wanted to. Both options are great. I'm going to create my own because I can and I am. And I'm just going to play around with some thread thickness. If you want to know more information about all of the things you can do with top stitches and how you can edit them, adjust them, how you can create your own, the beginner's guide, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but it's really great and you, it will tell you all the things you need to know. So here I'm just applying my top stitches onto my pillow. And now I can zoom in and you can see it really easily. Also, because this is a decorative top stitch, I'm gonna play around with my SBI. Yeah, that's better. Hmm. Yeah, okay. And now let's go into our buttons. Let's play around with that. So right now we have our default button, but you can play around with the shape and size and all of those things. There's more information on what you want to do and how you can uh, like adjust and play around with buttons in that beginner's guide. I know I've already mentioned it, but it doesn't make sense. Um, you can also even change the type of this. So let's actually say it's shiny. And I'm going to jump back into my library in my art, and I'm just going to drag and drop this in. Now, let's say you didn't have your artwork over here in your library, and you, you, there are these like file opened in both like your buttons and also in your fabric. So you could do this file open, and then it will take you to your files that you have, and you can grab it through there within your computer. So no worries if you're like, um, what if I don't have it in club? That's fine. And as you can see, you can change the type. So maybe we actually need to like, so that's really shiny. We're going with the shiny effect. And look at this. We've got a decorative pillow in a matter of minutes. I can simulate it again and it's looking great. And what I'm gonna do finally to really like, wow, is I'm going to make this high res. So the high res button is right over here and it will automatically like lower your particle distance and your collision and everything to make it look a little bit more realistic. And you can even see like now there's like little folds and gatherings here. And the final touch is I am going to add this thing, it's called puckering. If you go into the object browser over here, you can then get it. And then you have this default puckering. So this is how I like to do puckering. I like to apply it first and then play around and adjust it based off of what I see and how I want it. So that's how I'm going to do it. However, you could play around with it first and then apply it. So really, it's your world. So here I'm going to select the default puckering. And the main things that you can play around with is 
the normal map. So this is going to make it so that you can see it a little bit more easily. You see how I make it at 200, you see this a lot. You wouldn't really want it that intense because it's just like really, it's kind of right at you. You can also play around with your density. So the higher you make it, the farther apart it'll be. That's a little bit more realistic. One of the things I tell almost everybody is it's really important to jump into your render window and check this out because as you can see, it changes quite often um, on how it looks. Now, this is very shiny. So of course you could go back in and then you could say like, hey, maybe a little less shine or something. But you can keep playing around and all of that. And it's gonna be great. But here you have it, a great decorative pillow. And what's even better is then you could put it in a great 3D environment like this one and have like a whole scene for you to show off to people. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning all about decorative pillows and everything that goes into it. If you have any questions, please feel free to write in the comments below. Also, please like and subscribe to the Clo channel. There's so many great videos that you can watch about a lot of different subjects and concepts within Clo. There's also great the great beginner's guide, which I've mentioned a few hundred times now, I think, and other great workflows that you can watch that will be really helpful to you. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.